Hey guys, welcome to Tiny Windows 7. I know we did a tiny operating system yesterday of Windows 11. I figured today we would do Windows 7. I assume Windows 10 is probably pretty close to the same as Windows 11. I just thought maybe Windows 7 would be better because Windows 7 in general was lighter weight. However, in actually investigating the operating system, um, I've come to the conclusion that there's a couple things. Number one, if you want to use it in its default configuration, it requires about four gigs of drive space and about 256 megs of RAM, single core to run, and it'll work fine on those specs. However, if you need to install the KBs in order to get like hypervisor to work or VMware to work, or if you need to install any of the updates in order to get like Google Chrome to work or any of the other operating system configurations, at that point, it's no longer a good idea to run the tiny OS. And the reason why is because the tiny version is a 32-bit x86, um, and once you get all the drivers installed and you get all the updates installed in order to support somewhat modern browser configurations, at that point you're looking for at least 25 to 30 gigs of drive space, at least two cores, and again, you're limited to four gigs of memory, so you really take a, uh, an impact in performance running the 32-bit version. Uh, also, the 32-bit version for the tiny version of the operating system, which I'll show you here that there is a difference. It actually was developed by somebody else and they, they pumped in some variations on what the actual system is. But um, frankly, it's just not worth it. You know, it might, it might be worth it in the sense that if you want it to run on like a thumb drive and you're gonna use it on very, very bare minimum hardware, it might work okay for that, for just a browser. But it's not gonna work for, you know, your virtualized system for anything that's running anything modern. If you wanted to use like Netflix or have any domain configuration, like for instance, you wanted like remote server administration tools like the RSAT tools to run the latest version with the supported operating systems, you're gonna need to have the latest updates. And at that point, you're looking at 30, 40 gigs of hard drive space on a 32-bit operating system. It's just not worth running. So I guess what I'm saying here is that if you have a need to run a tiny operating system, I still think the best option is probably Linux. Um, if you need to run a tiny operating system that's Windows, then I'd say Windows 7 is probably your best option. But once you install all the updates, it's really no smaller than if you just did a 64-bit version of the operating system with all the updates installed. And at that point, you'd be able to use more than the 4 gig limitation on memory and the 2-core limitation on processor. Like and subscribe for more videos, guys. Hopefully this brief video gives you a good understanding on Windows 7 and the Tiny Edition.